All right, welcome everybody here on Twitch and also on YouTube for Mono White Judith is our deck to start the day off today. So we're basically playing a mono white aggro deck with all of our one drops. We have six different white one drops in here. Only a couple healers hawks, but four four x of all the others. Um, and we're uh, and to to complement those, we got four Judith the Scourge Diva. So Judith is awesome with other creatures, of course. Um, you know, pumping them up is great, and then like the, the damage trigger, it's awesome. So the the problem is is black and red don't actually have like the best one drops white kind of does so we can we can kind of use all these white one drops and pair it with judah so i think that's pretty interesting uh for us to try and then of course we get history banali and heroic reinforcements which are awesome ways to end games as well really powerful cards you know to pair with judith on the top end and we get a little bit of card advantage with light at the stage that could uh work pretty well with all these one drops so that's kind of cool too uh, this was a 5-0 list uh, from Magic Online um, about a week ago now. I haven't been able to play it yet, so I'm excited to try this out. It looks pretty good. I like having all these Honor Guards in the sideboard, too, when we play against Sultai. So that lo looks pretty awesome. So, yeah, this deck looks pretty good. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, yep, this is our deck. going to go ahead and play this in the ranked queue. Um, which I don't really know how to do. Traditional ranked. I'm going to play, like, I know more and more people want me to, to play the ranked stuff. Um, I'm going to be maybe playing, like, one deck a day in, like, the ranked queues and, um, kind of, kind of go from there. We've only played just a little bit of ranked so far, so I'm still bronze on there for now. Um, but then we have we have three donation decks later on uh, after this, and so all those donation decks will be doing the regular queue of our uh, win five or lose two, try to get to fight some final bosses and everything. So with here, I'll, I'll probably play about the same, probably play until I win five or lose two, um, play for about an hour, hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes or so with the deck. Uh, that's what I'm going to kind of do here. Hey, Steve Supremo. Yes, you were on the donation decks. Hey, I wanted to, you know, I was looking, you know, so I was looking, yeah, you got the Grixis Burn deck, you know, I was looking at that. And I wanted to know, like, how much, how much have you played with the deck before? Um, if, like, if you, if you've, like, played games with it, like, how much you have, um, and things like that. I'm, I'm pretty worried about a couple of things. The biggest thing I'm really worried about is only 19 lands in the deck. And then just, and then some of the sideboard. But, yeah, I wanted to know. If you if you played the deck too much yet, if you've had some success with it, and there, all right, one lander is not going to do it. Let's go ahead and mulligan this. All right, this is keepable. Don't need that land. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a, a red source yet. Um, if we do find any of our red cards. Okay, do you play it in best of one or do you play it in best of three? Because best of one uh, has a different has like a different algorithm for how they give you lands, so you actually get to play a lot less lands at best of one than you do in normally in best of three. Okay, you play at best of three. Okay. Okay. Well, then I'll try it out then. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm worried about getting to three three mana to get to sword point and risk factor and things like that. That's what I'm. That's what I'm worried about, is actually having uh, three mana. So I, I can't get rid of the Tribunal here no matter what. Or sorry, I can't get rid of the Wild Breath Walker uh, with Tribunal here no matter what. So we're going to have to wait a turn. But we certainly need to get this Wild Breath Walker off of the battlefield.
So that's nine permanent. So next turn we'll have the city's blessing. So yeah, we're just really hoping to draw any of our three or four mana spells here. Really want to see, um, you know, Judith, Heroic Reinforcements, or History Banalia. Any of those. Yeah, I've heard best of one is just really bad. Cool, Jealous. I'm glad you're playing the leagues and enjoying them. Good. Alright, we're going to need Legion's Landing to start pulling a lot of weight. How many lands do we have in this deck? 21? So we've seen 6 lands so far. Out of the 21 in 11 cards. It's not so good. It's going to be tough to win. Don't think we're going to get here, but we'll see. Yeah, our opponent still has five cards in hand, and they're going to be at 23 with a big creature. Well, I, I was saying the sixth land because of the scry. So, like, we know we know a bottom card's a land. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. That's what that's why I said six lands. Cause yeah, we we mulligan and scry to land to the bottom. Also. All good. Okay. That's a start. So only need to get that Wild Growth Walker out of here. I know they have Hydroid Crisis that's that's coming that gets to be a, a large flyer. Um, but can't afford for them to have have anything there. This this attack on the ground is a bad attack. And I, I honestly didn't mean to. I just kinda I was thinking of just like, you know, attack all the flyers and I just kinda, you know, hit hit the attack all. I didn't mean to make that attack on the ground, so we we lost a one token. Every fight me. This is nothing. Do I need to save this? Do this again. <laughs> I was promised mono white Judith, but I see mono white non Judith. Yeah, basically. Oh my gosh, double branch walker still. It's gonna be nice having the, the Takali honor guards in the deck. Should try to shut down this explorer. Yeah, Dawn of Hope would be nice. this no there's there's nothing that's going to get rid of sideboards that's not that's not a thing um So 
So what all do I want to do? Like, a lot of these cards, like, seem good. Like, honestly, every single card on my sideboard I like. I like Honor Guard, Baffling Edge, Johnny, Drill Bit, Lava Coil. I like every single card in the sideboard. I don't think we just sideboard in 15, though. I don't think we just changed the deck that much. I certainly like Baffling End and Lava Coil. And Johnny. I guess I'm not playing Drill Bit, though. One of my worst one drops. Healer's Hawk. And. Hmm. How am I supposed to bring in all these cards, though? I'm not sure. We're saying, so don't want this much removal because we won't have the late game anyways. We need a good density of threats to kill them fast. It's very possible. Don't have a whole lot of experience with like the mono white deck. Um, but having stuff to kill like Wild Growth Walker seems just so, so important. And exile it for good. Unlike the, the Conclave Tribunal there didn't really exile for good. They get got to keep getting it back. Um, and hopefully with the help of Judith and Ajani, we can have a, a good late game. Certainly like where our hand's at here. Draw another land. We're looking good. Yeah, it certainly seems like we have to kill Wild Growth Walker. We need to be better against Cry of the Carnarium, I suppose. I guess that's that's their sideboard card that they have against us. So I think I probably should take out Hunted Witness. And not... Like, yeah, I think like Hunted Witness maybe should have been the card to take out instead of uh, Dauntless Bodyguard. No friend of mine as like a one drop. Is born of struggle. Or maybe just trim some Judiths, yeah. Because of Cry. Hmm. So Heroic Reinforcements uses my mana the best. Look how far you've come. Hey, what's up, Yud? Going good. Yeah, I should just attack first. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I should just attack first before I do anything else. I like having a Johnny because a Johnny works so well with um Johnny works so well with Takali Honor Guard whenever Honor Guard is killed. Um but but Bodyguard probably works better with Honor Guard than Hundred Witness does. Alright, so that's that's a change I need to make right there. Um
Hey, what's up, Hot Outside today? Now, is this taking out too many one drops? We still have 16 one drops. I think this looks okay. Maybe I want reinforcements instead of Judith. So maybe this. So I only have six removal spells, so I don't have a ton because I, I took out the three Conclave Tribunals. I brought in three Baffling End and three Lava Quill, but I did take out three Tribunals, so I only brought in three other removal spells. All right, can we win a game on the draw when they have their sideboard configuration trying to defeat us? This will be the tough game to win. Oh, man. This hand is rough. If, like, you know, this just costs three white and, th and two white, this would be, you know, just fine to keep. But, you know, we have to draw one of our red sources to turn on either of these, and then we also have to draw a red and a black to turn on Judith. Our opponent's down to six, though. I, I, I'm going to keep this, but this can certainly go awry, you know, if we don't draw the red mana. Um, but just having, like, the one drops, the history of Benalia, I'm not going to mulligan this. I don't think our deck mulligans too well, you know, low land aggro deck. I, I think that, like, taking out cards from our deck is, is pretty tough. You know, we don't have, like, the card advantage to make it up for the most part. That's a terrible draw. Alright, we need red mana. I would rather have Drill Bit on the play than on the draw. Um, as far as a card, it's easier to get in for damage early on the play. I guess on the the good part about on the draw for Drill Bit, though, is you, you have that extra card being on the draw. So Drill Bit, all it does is reduce resources from both sides by trading one of your resources for the opponent's other resource. And you don't get any damage in with it. But that's not as big of a deal when you're on the on the draw because you have the extra resource. But I think you want drill bit more against decks that have like just a few cards that matter a ton against you. Stuff like sweepers and things like that. Sultai just has has just good cards all over the place. Man, if we just had red mana. And so the fact that they just have good cards all over the place um, means that if you, especially cards that that generate advantage too, that if you're just playing a card that doesn't have the potential to deal damage and only trades, and doesn't affect the battlefield either. The thing about like removal at least affects the battlefield. You know, it's good after they spend their mana. I think our opponent could have finality. We certainly see that here. Hmm. Oh, they have that thing. All right, there's the red. So do I start with Judith or do I start with reinforcements? I think I start. I think I just go reinforcements, reinforcements. Um. Certainly do not want finality, so hopefully they don't have finality as well to follow this up. It's just the perfect card. 
mean, Cry the Carnarium would have been okay too, but popping up that Carnage Tyrant is pretty rough. Yeah, reinforcements is really good. Very true. It's it's so good. Let's tear this place apart. Feel the wrath of Scala. Killer. That's a killer. Come to me. Or they're back up to eleven. Not looking good. Vivian can find any explore creature here. Balance comes. Okay, that's that's fine. That's not an explore creature. So we have to kill them like this turn. Dang, we can put them down to two. So close. Um. I can't. I can't just sit back and attack, or can't just sit back and and win. Oh, that can tempt anyway. Alright, good hand opponent. So I think playing that first um playing the first heroic reinforcements, you know, like it did a whole lot of damage and almost killed them, put them down to six, and it put it put us in a great spot for a second uh reinforcements to kill them in our hand. But it it ended up being really bad against the finality. If I just played Judith there. Uh, we don't get nearly as much damage in, but then we get like some Judith triggers with finality, and then we can go reinforcements, reinforcements back to back. So, um, whoops, oh one, my play basically killed them if they had any, like if they did not have finality in their hand, you know, if that's like the only card to save them there, for the most part. Um, I guess cry, cry the Carnarium, though, too. Both, either of those. Um, but being more patient with Judith may have may have been able to win. We may not have won. You know, I'm not saying that we definitely would have won if we would have played the Judith there. I am bronze ranked. Uh, playing three Legion War Boss can't possibly be right, right? Like it can't, it can't possibly be right. I like War Boss is just so good. Don't you just need four of those? And where's, where's um, where's Siege Gang Commander? I don't know. Maybe you can't play three, or maybe you can't play all the war bosses. Oh yeah, you don't even have chain whirler in the main either. I guess there's just too many threes. That's what Skirk Prospector is doing. If 
If you have Skirk, like, uh, there's no reason to have Skirk Pro Prospector in the deck if you, if you're not gonna have something like Siege Gang, like something to get a lot of mana. What does this thing mean? I don't know, they're a little different than us, whatever that means. Yeah, Siege Gang can give you some more goblins to sacrifice to trigger Judith. But the thing is, Judith does not trigger on non-token creatures. So, like, when you're making, like, your goblin tokens with your token thing, Judith doesn't trigger. Hey, what's up, Zen Streams? Yeah, we have, there's a, a couple other red cards. We have two other red cards. Um, in the main deck. There is... It, it didn't change. There's ranked in best of three and best of one. There's ranked in both. It's not... Yeah. Honestly, Enigma Drake's kind of really difficult to get through. Tunika, with that sub for the second month in a row. Welcome, Tunika. That was a perfect draw step. That draw step could not be, could not have been better. There you go. I like it. First sub of the day. 75. Alright, so we're playing against Drakes. So only want Lava Coil. And I think that's it. Um, Healer's Hawk not as good as the flyer doesn't you know like they can just block flyers easily um all right so i gotta cut one other card So they play a lot of shocks, but I still don't think I cut a Judith here. I think I may just take out a Hunt of Witness. I kind of like the light up the stages. Yeah, I'm just going to take out a Hunt of Witness. Take out three one drops for the three lava coils. Baffling end is good against you know Enigma Drake and, and uh, the Terramander, but it doesn't get the crackling Drake. So I like lava coil and Conclave Tribunal. They they get everything. Lean with Dauntless Bodyguard because it can, um, you know, attack for two immediately. I don't like Flame Akeld too much. I I think I'd rather play Light at the stage than Flame Akeld.
Yeah, I think Judith's wor worth it in this deck. We have struggled with red mana. Red's been like the color that we've been struggling with here. It's weird they didn't just grab one of the lifelink things. Um, I don't know. I just I haven't. I've never really st started using the the hotkeys. I have no. I have no uh, no like reason why I'm not using hotkeys. It's just easy to click stuff. I don't know. Hmm. How do I want to do this? I could certainly see my opponent having. Uh, yeah, I've just I've never like learned the hotkeys. I could certainly see my opponent having uh, dive down. They already ditched one earlier. They're means they probably have another. I could like play around spell pierce by just playing conclave like I could play around like just spell pierce by by um just tapping the two creatures and two lands for tribunal. But then heroic reinforcements likely get spell pierced, and I think I, I guess I'd rather have tribunal spell pierced. But yeah, I thought I thought dive down was pretty likely. No, I don't I don't have any time to to squeeze in any other decks today. I have I have three donation decks after this. Yeah, I can fit it in tomorrow or any other day. But right now I have have three donation decks already on the on the books. Okay, you work the next few days, gotcha. But you can also, yeah, you can tell me like whatever day you want in the future. Okay, yeah, you can wait till next week. So yeah, you can tell me, you know, like next Wednesday, um, you know, whatever time slot, and I'll have I'll have you signed up ready to go then. Also, yeah, it's good good hand for our opponent here. Uh, don't think we are winning this one. I can't think of anything that helps us win this right now. I could see playing drill bit. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Schedules can do that. I could see playing drill bit. Instead of light up, instead of light up the stage. I'm gonna play two, there. Hmm. It's not ideal. Neither is that. Going to going to five. Let's 
upkeep could work out. If we just draw like a red source and a bunch of threats. Lava Coil is a, a pretty good card in the matchup. Like if they if they only have two creatures and we Lava Coil them both, this could work out. It's kind of unlikely though. What are five card hands going to really look like though? Hmm. Don't think a one one's good enough. We need to find history banalias. History banalias, red manas, and heroic reinforcements. Do you think Esper Midrange will be tier one deck? I really like it, but I want to face fifty percent of mirror matches. You, you don't. You're not going to face fifty percent of your matches. Are not going to be Esper Midrange. That's that's just not how. There's not. There's just not standard decks that are fifty percent of matches. Decks that you face a lot, like Soltai, are like twenty percent. Maybe those are like the highest numbers that you see in standard. Esper is not going to be like that. Esper is probably going to be like 10% maybe. So yeah, if, if you like the deck, build the deck. And play the deck. That's what we need. We need History Banalia. We need that power. What do you think is the best counter is to Sultai, or rather just Krasis in general? Um, um, honestly, I'm not exactly sure what the what the very best counter is against Sultai. There's yeah, a lot of things. Krasis, uh, Exile Removal is pretty good against Krasis. Um, exile Removal used to be bad against Sultai because of Vivian of... Or, like, not not just Exile, but sorry, Enchantment Removal was bad against... Uh, was bad against it before because um, Vivian would just kill enchantments, but in, the enchantments get rid of Krasis, like, for good. But yeah, deputy. So deputy detention is really good against Krasis. Um, thing about Krasis, you get to draw all the cards though. So having just like discard spells, discard, and and just kind of like discard in general, just keeps the opponent's hand low. Um, so like keep them from having a lot of cards in hand, so they can can't they can't just keep on hitting lots of land drops and play big Krasis. We're trying here. Oh, it's at 13. I think I'm like, I can at least play around uh, Spell Pierce. They didn't have a dive down last turn, or at least if they did, they didn't use the dive down last turn. Hmm. 
All right, good. No spell pierce. It's good for us. Down to 12. So hopefully we get to Conclave Tribunal this Crackling Drake. And we have like four turns to kill our opponent with this Terramander. Terramander's really good. It's just a two mana 5-5 five, five flyer last turn of course all these all these creatures are just insanely good crackling drake being in you know an 8-4 flyer for four mana that enters the battlefield and draws a card it's kind of ridiculous See what we get here. We got one turn. It's not gonna do it. So we need this aspirant to be able to jump the terramander for a turn. So it's pretty unlikely that that happens. All right, well, hand did not work out. Oh, and two. This deck just doesn't, doesn't feel very good to me. I was, you know, like really excited about playing this to, to, for, to start with, but the mana's tough with only having these eight red sources. That's pretty tough. The, the one drops are kind of bad. Some of these one drops, like Hunted Witness, is pretty bad. Um, what's the other one drop? Vanguard. Lean in Vanguard's like a good card. Let's get Lean in Van Vanguard in here. Yeah, these Hunted Witnesses are just not not impressive. Um, but yeah, I was thinking that, you know, we'd have like a, a good amount of like, you know, power at the top end with the Judith history and heroic reinforcements, but it just doesn't really seem like it. It seems like our, our opponents are just going over the top of us and like these cards aren't, aren't winning us these games. Um, Hey, what's up, Wolfmaster? Thanks for resubbing for the second month. Thanks, Wolfmaster. Thank you. All right, so second sub of the day there. I wonder if I'm supposed to have more of this card. I don't know. Because this is like a, a one mana 2-2 two -two that can gain you some life, and that, that life is, is honestly pretty important and just being a 2-2 I like quite a bit um yeah and I don't really like healer's hawk either all right if we get rid of healer's hawk can we get one blood crypt in here for a 20 second land and another light up the stage 
I want to try this light at the stage. But I think, I think 21 drops is perfectly fine. I don't think we needed as many as we had. All right, I want to try this. All right, let's edit our deckless command. Lean in, uh, lean in Vanguard. Another light up. And one Blood Crypt. So, the thing about Healer's Hawk... Um, Healer's Hawk is really good when you have Venerate Luxodon. And honestly, maybe that's like the card that, that this deck's missing, is not playing Venerate Luxodon. Like, maybe like these live the stages need to be Venerate Luxodons. But Healer's Hawk's, you know, better whenever you can make it, a, you know, just a bigger than a one-power flyer. But if it's only just a one-power flyer and, and never anything more... You know, one power for a card is just not killing the opponent very fast. I mean, I guess there is Judith. Judith can make it two power. That's true. Hey, Baldurin, day's going good. Yeah, we'll we'll see. St yeah, Stevo, we can get get to your game. I think probably after this match, we can get to your. We can go ahead and switch out and go to your deck after this match. So we have time to play the other three decks today. Because, um, yeah, we're already 0-2. So I don't usually play till five wins or two losses. But I want to just play a third. I want to play a third match with making a little bit of changes there. Well, we found the light of the stages. Um, they can keep. We don't need to, like, win the game immediately, like, right away. We're going to have a little bit of staying power here. I like that we have red and black mana. That's been a struggle. And, uh, History Benali is, like, our best turn three play. Unfortunately, old Snubhorn, um, doesn't attack, doesn't deal any damage early for a light up the stage. Uh, the second part, Belderon, the answer is no, I'm not going to be uh, trying to get it invited, but um, it's, it's nothing that I'm expecting an, an invite to anytime soon. There's, yeah, it's just, won't, won't be happening for me. It's unfortunate. Hey, Haishin. Um, I'm not, I'm not like a, a big meme person. I, I don't, wouldn't say the mono white's a meme of that. I don't, I don't really care for, for memes. I don't know. I'm too, too old for that. That kind of stuff. Oh, thanks, Baldurin. Taking it all. Alright, let's see what Live the Stage can do for us. <laughs> Double heroic reinforcements. The opponent just concedes, I don't even have a land. But yeah, they, they may not be able to get there. Hey, program. Thanks for resubbing there for the third month. That gets some hype in the channel. Thanks, program. All right, History Mount Alia, good. Hmm. Yeah, we're playing like mono white aggro with Judith. It's like mono white Judith. Hmm. 
Take out Aspirants for Honor Guards. I... Yeah, I won't be playing Honor Guards. Honor Guard just stopping... Just only Crackling Drake from drawing a card. So four cards in their entire deck. And all it does is maybe stop them from cycling. That's that's not a good enough reason to play a two-mana 1-3. Because a two-mana 1-3 just doesn't... Isn't very powerful. You know, it doesn't... It just doesn't... Um, doesn't help us too much. So I'm not going to be playing Honor Guard here. I think Drill Bit and Lava Core are like the two cards I'm interested in. Um... I don't know. I may want to just not sideboard. I'm kind of thinking the no sideboard. Sideboard didn't work out too much, too well for us last time as we just sat with some removal spells and died. Let's just keep our keep our main deck. Hey Yahweh. What card from the set has surprised me the most? Uh, probably, probably Hydroid Crisis. I thought Hydro Crisis was okay, but nothing special. Like, I thought it was just going to be kind of too expensive to, to really make it work too well, and it's just the best card in the set. So I'd have to say that's, gotta, I'd have to say that's the most surprising for me. Yeah, Tithe Taker is kind of a little expensive at the two mana. Two mana. I'm, the card that we could be playing for two mana that's a little surprising that we don't have would be Adanto Vanguard. Adanto Vanguard would be the, the card we would be playing there. Um, it is a little surprising that we don't have any Adanto Vanguards in here. But Judith is kind of in that slot. I guess Judith is in like the Benelish Marshal slot. We've just been losing, you know, like it's, you know, like, like what happened with O2, we've just been, been losing the games, you know, like, games have been close, but they just haven't, our deck just hasn't seemed powerful enough to, hasn't been powerful enough. Looks like we're going to win this one, though. Our opponents have just had, you know, good hands for the most part, like the other two matches. And won the games. It wasn't any, like, uh, particular thing that happened. That one was really quick. I've been playing this deck for one hour. What's four o'clock? All right, let's do. Let, all right, Steve, I'm gonna do one more. That was just really quick, where we didn't really do very much. Let's do one more. See if we can finish out at two-two. Then this is the last. This will be our last match for. Uh, Okay, cool. You're in no rush. This will be our last match for Monolite Judith. So hopefully we can make it get back out to respectable 2 2. But overall, I, I have been. Um, <laughs> that is. Those are really big Oreos. Overall, I've been kind of disappointed with this deck. I've been. I've been fairly disappointed. It just hasn't seemed uh, as powerful. Um, I don't think it's, you know, from what we've seen so far, it doesn't seem like playing Judith is an upgrade over just playing uh, Benelish Marshall and Venerade Luxodon. I, I feel like we're missing the power of Venerade Luxodon and Adanto Vanguard that just aren't in the deck here. So 
So that's been that's been my takeaway so far. We have too many underpowered cards and not enough powerful cards. The pairing system takes a lot longer in ranked. Um, you know, waiting like 10 seconds is a long time in the other queue. Gurton Buster. Love our opponent's name. Great reference to Psych, one of my favorite shows. Pearl says, I think the main issue is that you cut uh, Marshall to put in Judith's. Well, I think that the Judith has potential. Mar it would be Marshall's number five through eight, five through like seven or eight, not instead of them. I Yeah, I, I think that's, that makes a lot of sense to me that pairing Marshall with Judith would probably be better than just playing Judith instead of Marshall. Well, that light up the stage wasn't any good. <laughs> so yeah, live the stage should probably just be a Danto Vanguard. You know, we don't have any Danto Vanguards, and Vanguard would probably be a better, better card to have here. Yeah, we're like the mono white aggro deck, except for we're playing Judith alongside it. All right, so no red mana for Gates of Blaze. I can play Dauntless Bodyguard and protect Judith this next turn as well. Certainly like Lean and Vanguard a lot more than um, that other token. The other white one drop that we had before. You've been using Kaya, uh, the Usurper with, or Serper, or whatever the name of Kaya is, the Planeswalker with Unmoored Ego. Nice. Yeah, that's that is really good against control decks for sure. I like it. Have people really been playing the, the dog, the common dog in, in Limited too much? Hmm. Oh, yeah, you haven't seen it? Yeah, that was a that was a great turn for them. A blaze and wow. I don't know if their deck does anything better than this. Yeah, we've had too many lands. This is just kind of what's been happening to us. Our opponents have had like really good starts, but so they had Growth Spiral on two, Circuitous Route on on three. On turn four, they had Gates of Blaze plus a Colossus. So they had Wrath plus eight eight on turn four. And then turn five, they have mind control all your stuff. Like, how are we supposed to beat that? That's just so good. Like, all right. So drill bits in here. Um, over tribunal. The light of the stage, you know, like, obviously we don't know the order of the cards, but it kind of cost us that game. If we just didn't have light up the stage, we would have drawn reinforcements and maybe been able to win that game with reinforcements. Yeah, I guess we would have, yeah, I think, would we have attacked for lethal on our fourth turn? Yeah, I think, yeah, we would have attacked for lethal on turn four with that reinforcement. So just having light up the stage... Cost us that game, actually. Um, I guess this is all we're doing.
you know, that's just unlucky for the live stage to happen like that. You know, it could have easily been the other way. That doesn't mean I'm just going to take out light at the stage and sideboarding here or say it's a bad card or anything like that. Yeah, I love drill bit here. Of course, got to be able to cast it, but as long as we can cast it. Love it here. I I have not played Esper Hero, honestly. Um, yeah, so I've, I've only played against it, and playing against it, it it feels like it's you know it's a deck, it's it's okay, but it it doesn't. It doesn't seem like there's anything too special about it. I did have the option just to sit back and uh, activate a Danto Vanguard at end step here, which is better against a Wrath and like save history. But it's kind of unlikely that our opponent has red mana right away anyway. I don't want to trade my 2-2 Knight for the Krasis, considering the Knight's going to be a 4-3 next turn. And we'll just activate Adanto. Yeah, it's the present you've been getting to. So yeah, Judith, this is the other thing, is we have a, a good amount of tokens in this deck, and Judith does pump the tokens up, but it does we don't get the triggers on the tokens. The, the die trigger, so it is even a it's worse with tokens than Benelish Marshall is, because it doesn't get the the toughness bump as well. I don't think there's really any reason to play the Legion's Landing. I think they they kind of have to like have a wrath here, or they're dead. Oh, I guess they have they can gain life with the other angel. They gain six life. That's not enough life. Oh, yeah, I'm not casting Judith right now because I don't have... Judith, I, I don't have black mana. I was thinking about Legion's Landing. But I don't, I don't have black mana for Judith. So that's why I'm not casting Judith. I can't. I would love to play Judith. I don't have any... I, I stream here uh, seven days a week. So every day. I usually take just a, a, a random day off every, like... Every, like, ten days to two weeks or so. Um, or if there's like some big event happening, like how there was like the Super Bowl hap happening the other day, um, but I don't have any like scheduled days off. And so, especially if you if you donate for like a specific day, like next week, I'll make sure not to take that day off. Hey, Ferlin. So yeah, I, I'm here every day, but like I said every like ten days to, to two, ten to fourteen days or so. You know, just just kind of feel like a day off every, you know, like two or three times a month. And so I usually I usually say that that day in my Discord channel. I'm okay, taking that day off. Hmm. 
This hand has a lot of potential here. We'll see if they have the early gates ablaze. Certainly playing bodyguard to protect Aspirant here in case it gates ablaze. Uh, then if I do I want landing or snubhorn? I guess I want landing so I can go Judith next turn and flip landing. No, I'm still a long ways away from finishing Breath of the Wild. Not like a long ways. I, I've got I've defeated three of the Divine Beasts, three of the four. Um, but I still have a lot of areas to to kind of go through and explore. <laughs> yeah, blue has uh, Ionize and Expansion Explosion in that deck for burn. There's there's no creatures in the Grixis burn deck. And Stay Manzo, I was doing some ranked here with this one. Oh, I probably should just play the Snowborn. Like I assumed, yeah, like I, I certainly assumed Gates of Blaze here, which is why I didn't play Snowborn. But maybe I should have because of Judith. No, I'm, I'm glad we didn't play it. If I have... Because if I have land, I get to go land reinforcements and get to play the, the Snubhorn plus reinforcements. But... Oh, you're right. It would have actually... The Snubhorn would have actually survived. You're right. I didn't really take in consideration... It surviving. All right, not another ablaze. That should do it. Okay, so it worked out a little better there. So we started 0-2, and then we made it a respectable 2-2. Um, all right, so that's that's our last match there with Mono White Judith. So let's um, talk about this deck a little bit. Overall, I was I was really excited to play this deck. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, this is a 5-0 list that um, from a little while ago. I was really excited to play, but didn't like it. Honestly, I don't didn't feel like Judith was worth playing black for. You know, and so I kind of feel like just regular Boros aggro. You know, heroic reinforcements is awesome. Light at the stage didn't really seem that good or, or necessary. It was pretty disappointing, honestly. Uh, I, was, I was really had high hopes for light at the stage. I I did I liked the changes that I made there after the first two. I just put in lean and vanguard over uh, hunted witness. I changed the the deckless commands. The deckless command shows this. Um, but I liked having Vanguard over that other one drop, and I liked having an, another land in the light of the stage. But, um, yeah, the Judith was kind of disappointing. I, I mean, I, I feel like Ben Elish Marshall, um, and then, like, you know, not having, like, Adanto Vanguard and Ben Elish Marshall and Venerate Luxodon. I think those are, like, three really, really powerful cards that not playing is, is not worth it. Um, so, yeah. So... I think I'd go back to just, you know, if you want to play mono white aggro, you know, with the splashing of color, I think I'd just go back to regular Boros or Azorius with Deputy. I like that that deck as well. Um, so either of those. Unfortunately, Judith wasn't as good. If if you want to go with Judith, though, I think I think we just got to make the, the deck kind of a little more powerful. I think 21 drops is probably too many. Like, I think, I think 16 one drops is fine. So if we just have 16 one drops and then, so basically get rid of one of these one drops... Um, which it's, and, and the light up the stage. Cause I think we, I think we need the Banish Marshals also. So you can have Marshals and Judith's like have, have like that combination of both of those. Um, and maybe in some veteran Luxodons too, cause that card's amazing. So, all right, there we go. So if you're watching this later on YouTube, thanks for watching. I hope you tune in to uh, some of these other donation decks that we're going to be playing throughout the day today. So up next, we're going to be playing some Grixis Burn, and I hope to see you there. All right, thanks for watching.